Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Supergirl. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's kind of break it down. I really like that this episode gives us what I was kind of wondering about immediately uh, from last week's episode. Obviously, Alice getting her memory wiped of Kara and Supergirl being... Uh, the same person and now we see what that disconnect has done the, the ramifications of it the unintended consequences because at first you see it a little bit here and there like Alex can't remember what Carr's favorite movie is and it's like oh, I'm wondering about that and it's like now you know why because basically every part of her memory that is connected to knowing that Kara is an alien or Supergirl has been white in particular an alien because that alien connection eventually leads to Supergirl but nevertheless it's the whole thing of because Carr's favorite movie is The Wizard of Oz because Eliza, their Earth mom, well, I mean, her Earth mom, but Alex's mom, thought it'd be a, the movie would be appealing to Carr because it's like, oh, being somewhere so far from home, being, you know, in a foreign land, you know, comparing, you know, Dorothy to Carr. So I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. And it's like, now we see that that was completely wiped from Alex's memory. Uh, even to the point this episode, Alex was a little off kilter because she's like, I couldn't break those two like frat dudes about information about this whole situation. And also when it came down to it, like it's like, oh, this video came out. She's like, I'm not I'm off my game. And it's interesting cause for her. It's like maybe it's something to deal with the truth seeker. And it's like, right. That's so interesting, especially when John broke it down. Basically. Essentially, this isn't the exact way it works, but this is the way I'm going to break it down. It's like the synapses in her head that are connecting Kara to Supergirl have been broken. Those links have been broken in her brain. The truth seeker scratched on those synapses and, and it left an itch that like Alex is like, something just off. But, you know, and it seems like it wasn't an issue until the truth seeker started scratching. So, like, before, it's like a thing of, like, she didn't really notice that something was off until the truth seeker made it go. Like, it sent up red warning flags because I think it's her brain trying to compensate for, like, yeah, there's something there that I'm just kind of missing. I'm kind of feeling a little empty in some regards. So, I thought that was kind of interesting. I also love that uh, you had... Uh, Brainy going undercover for that little bit of time. He's like, yeah, BT dubs, uh, yeah, rage drug and stuff, stuff like that. And him just talking. Even Alex asked him later on, "Was like, where'd you learn how to talk, dude, bro?" And she's like, and he's like, like them, movies. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Uh, I love that. I was like, you're trying too hard. There's no way you're going to convince them. Oh no, they're idiots. So you're able to convince them. So that was pretty interesting because you could tell it was just him trying so hard because he was still talking like himself, but with he's like with you fellows. He was like, you know, he was. It was just him, him and him as himself, as brainy talking as a dude, bro. So I thought that's kind of interesting. He didn't change his inflections or anything like that. That's what I thought was just kind of fascinating about it. But it even runs even deeper, you know, with the whole Alex situation because when it comes down to it, like that moment her and Cara had later on, because it was a misunderstanding, miscommunication, because they're not on the same wavelength, Alex had her gun pointed at an alien that was attacking uh, the girl, uh, what's her name, Bobby? Uh, because, but, you know, Supergirl didn't know the whole situation either, so thought she was with the. Um, Children of Liberty that had shown up, but at the same time, it's like, well, Alex was, you know, it's like, oh, that was a dangerous alien, blah, 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 but it's like, oh, like, you know, she's like, I'm here just to get all the facts, and the fact of the matter is, it's like, kind of berating Supergirl, being like, oh, you're the girl of steel, both in on outside and inside, and it's just like, so you don't think I'm vulnerable? She's like, in no shape or form, and it's like, which is shitting on your part, because you got, like, no one has vulnerability just because you're super strong like that doesn't mean but to be fair it's also because Alex knows Kara you know so it's like she knew Kara is vulnerable when, when she because she knows Kara she knows what kind of a kind person Kara is because she doesn't know Kara and Supergirl are the same person she doesn't correlate like because their connections like even her working together as with Supergirl is all tied to her connections to Kara and everything, so it's just it was just kind of heartbreaking, especially the way Alex kind of treated her like that. And you know, it sucks because Kara kind of has to take it because it's like the only way she's going to like 
her sister sacrificed for her, so it's like she has to keep this up because her sister wants to do whatever it takes to keep her safe. But, you know, Kara didn't realize just how much this would hurt, you know, because it's like, yeah, her and Alex are still good on a personal. Because that was something I was curious about, too. It's like how much of your because a lot of their because I brought this up last episode, a lot of their bonds were connected because of also her abilities, because even the thing we got was it what? Oh, no, that was season. Yeah, that was season three last season. Uh, the Midvale um, episode when we kind of got a look into their past. That was connected to Kara being an alien. I mean, because even Kara brings it up later on when she's talking to Nia. Like her, like Alex has always you know, had moments of being like, oh, she's pretty okay with the whole like her being an alien having powers thing. But in other times, it kind of rubbed her the wrong way. Just because I think the same way it would rub anyone the wrong way because it's just kind of like. It's the same reason why a lot of people have power problems with Superman and Supergirl, just because it's like, oh, you're these god amongst men, you have no vulnerability. But both of them, no matter what, they do have that human element. Granted, not everyone knows, but, you know, Superman has his human element because growing up on um, Earth, the same thing as Kara's, you know, so it's just kind of interesting. So... But it's like, I'm curious to see as the season progresses, like how much more of the, but it's like I said, it seems like her and Kara are still tight in some regards. I think that feeling is still there. Not all the memories are going to be tied to it. Like a lot of that Midvale memory is probably watered down, if not completely gone in its own right. But it's probably th like chunks of it being like, oh yeah, Kara showed up and helped save the day. Doesn't remember how Kara saved her life and helped and everything. But it's like a lot of their relationship is still intact, but probably some of it is kind of like, thin strings because all the you know important memories and implications around it in the sense of like everything related to her being an alien any memories that you know that might have been tied to that have been shaved down to like this very thin thread of just them being like oh like Something, something happened, and me and Kara are good, just because of, we grew because of something. I don't know why we grew to get closer together, but hey, we grew to, you know, so it's just, it's such a fascinating element to it. Because it's interesting, because that, well, that ultimately ties into, obviously, the other side of things in this episode, and that deals with Nia. Uh, Kara goes with Nia back home, um... Nia is still, you know, not telling her sister Maeve about the whole her being a dreamer ability situation. I'm like, huh, I'm wondering about why that is. And we later on find out because Maeve has always wanted that power. She's wanted it ever since she was, you know, born. Like she's read about it. She's trained herself to even know the ins and outs of the dream language. And so for it's also because and it never clicked in my head because I think. Yeah, Nia had explained it before, but now you add even more context to it. She's like, one in it, one generation, one person, every generation gets it. And it's like, amongst her, their generation, that being her and Maeve, they've got, Maeve, I mean, uh, Nia got the ability and Maeve didn't. There's no way for her to get it. Only one in the family can get it. And their mom had a dream about her daughter getting it. That's a complicated situation because... Uh, Nia uh, transitioned and it was a thing of like her mom didn't even think about because she never saw the daughter's face she just saw a daughter so that's kind of interesting so I guess it, for her it was just kind of like you were so focused it's, I mean it's that whole thing about interpreting your dreams you focus too much on one detail you kind of lose sight of the other things and that was Nia's problem in this episode because of like what happened to her mom she ended up dying from a uh, I guess a poisonous spider, but she didn't realize, like, because she saw her mom dying in her dream, but she didn't piece it together. She didn't say anything to anyone, not even to Kara, because she's that against her abilities, because her abilities are something she didn't ever want, because she knows how much it meant to her sister. And, you know, later on, Maeve's beating herself up about it. It's like, I couldn't save mom when I had this chance. If I had the dream abilities, maybe something's wrong with me. If I had, you know, Nia tried to be like, no, like, if even if you had it, there's no way you'd be able to interpret it. She's like, no, I know dream dream language, I would have been able to find out a way and understand it to save mom. So you know it makes Nia feel guilty on many different levels. One, the fact of the matter is she had the dream and she didn't realize what it meant and their mom died when she might have been able to do something. Maeve saying like, I could have done something about it makes her feel even more guilty because it's like, you know, it's like if I had told you the truth, maybe you could have interpreted it and made me understand like, oh, we need to save mom. Or also this fact is it also makes her feel guilty about the fact is that I'm the one with the ability, even though I don't want it. And you, 
want it so badly. And that's something, you know, Kara ends up explaining to her later on. It's like, I can understand that. You got an ability you didn't ask for. It's a destiny you didn't ask for. But that's the sad thing about it. There's no transfer of it because this is your destiny. Even her mom and Sly, the fact of the matter is this is your destiny. You, you, you know, she's like, my element is water. Your element is fire. And it will make you so much stronger. Because another element to this, too, is like for Maeve, it's like their mom used her abilities to help this community. They're from... You know, this community of aliens and humans coexisting, but it's also like on their planet, their grandmother was, she used her powers to be a hero, very similar to Supergirl, so she wanted that, you know, and, you know, Kara, knowing the truth and everything, was trying to be like, oh, you know, having, you know, being a hero and all that's not cracked up, it's always cracked up to be trying to kind of, I guess, lessen the blow when the truth eventually comes out, but Maeve ended up finding out because Nia, you know, had another dream and she acted upon it and Maeve was like, wait, you had a dream and, you know, and the sad thing is it turns into this big argument and Maeve says something super effed up where it's just kind of like, you're not even a, you're not even a real woman. It's like, Jesus. And it, it hurts even more because Nia's like, she was my biggest supporter when I went into transition. It's like, fuck, dude. Because the sad thing is, it's like, the thing is, Maeve got so caught up in what she was feeling. This is about me, 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 me. What about Nia? Nia has this ability. She could use your help and support to understand this ability. Like, that's the thing about it. Like, maybe at the end of the day, you don't deserve the ability if you're going to be this selfish about it. Like, the fact of the matter is, I get, but it, it like, you want to use it for good and everything. You want to follow in your mom's footsteps. But I get it. It's it's an aspect, once again, it's the parallels between Kara and Alex and, you know, Nia and Maeve. Because it's like, when someone has this ability, you know, it puts you. it's going to rub you the wrong way, like I was saying earlier. And it's just kind of, especially for Maeve, that makes a big difference between this and the Alex and Supergirl situation. Because it's like, Supergirl, you know, Alex has never been striving to have powers her entire life. That probably caused issues back in the day when they were younger, when she obviously knew about Kara and Supergirl being the same thing, but it's like, well, or at least Kara being an alien and everything. But for um, Maeve, she was aiming for this her entire life, you know? So I guess because on some level, she feels like she was robbed of it because it's like you transitioned to be a woman. The thing said, the, 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 the dream said that I was going to, it was going to be me. You know, and it's just kind of, like I said, it just kind of sucks that, you know, she says something hurtful and hopefully when it's all said and done, they can be a duo team of like Maeve helps interpret her dreams. You know, I think that would be the best way to go forward. You take both of you together, become the ultimate dreamer because it's like you take Nia's dreams and your understanding of it. I'm curious, or will, you know, Nia decide to go off and just kind of. 100% doing our own because her mom did leave her um, a uniform. I'm wondering is that something of her mom's? Like, I mean, of their mom's mom, you know, their grandmother because she was a hero on their planet so maybe that was something from that or maybe you know, because of her dream her their mom had already gotten that ready for potentially made when she got the ability and all that but obviously this is playing into why um, you know I've talked about it for a while about why uh, Brainy kept pushing Nia is because he knows who she is from the future. Like, you know, maybe, you know, records like there are records about Supergirl. There are probably records about Nia as well in that regard. So I'm very interested to see their story goes. Is it interesting because it's something I forgot to talk about, too, about the whole Alex and Car situation is why Car Alex treats her kind of even harsher technically, even whole potentially being a little harsher on aliens, which is interesting. It's because Kara essentially her connection to Kara, that that relationship, that blood like bond that they have, and not just being blood well, growing up blood related. In a sense, growing up as siblings acted as the foundation for her when it comes to all aliens. Once that was taken away, her entire perspective on aliens shifted. Like she's a little bit you know, she's nicer to obviously the Brainy and John, but at like at the heart of it, Kara was her foundation for that. And now that foundation's not even crumbled, it's disappeared, so her outlook is gonna be different. Her and Haley probably are gonna get along a lot more now because I think her connection with Kara was why she was very resistant and stubborn. Because Alex wasn't like even using the um aliens from the last episode, Alex didn't want to kill them. 
Haley did. Now you put Alex in that same situation as she is now with her memories, not knowing that uh, Kara and Supergirl are the same person. It's going to end up differently. She's going to agree with Haley of like, oh, these dangerous aliens, we need to put them down because she doesn't have that that connection in her heart. It her growing up with Supergirl kind of lend itself to like her compassionate side when it came to aliens, which is so interesting. It's almost this weird, crazy situation of almost like a nature versus nurture situation. I mean, you could, I guess you could almost make the argument that that was taken from her because is it like, you know, it's like if she never had car in her life, would she be this person right here, right now? Or could the argument be because that was taken from her, her heart is trying to compensate and now it kind of shifted over to this more aggressive side of things, this this aggressive perspective. I don't know. Like, I'm sure it leans itself more so to the first one, but I think I think it's kind of an interesting thing to think about in that dynamic, you know? And so I'm so curious because obviously Car has got to balance out. You know, that was something... It's so interesting because Kara's never had to balance that with Alex. Alex has always known who she is, so it adds this extra layer because it's it's like the Lena situation, but a thousand times worse. Like obviously her relationship, Supergirl's relationship with Lena was rocky, but Kara's relationship with Lena was still a okay. It's reflective of that, but like I said, a thousand times worse because it's like. Kara has this strong bond to her, not just as, you know, because Alex knew all the, she's the one person in the world who knew every side. I mean, currently speaking, she's the one person who's known, always known every side of Kara. God, I mean, I was about to say ever, but like obviously because there's other people who've joined the kind of, but no one will ever know Kara as a whole, both as so Kara and Supergirl, you know, as a Kryptonian, as much as Alex, because Alex grew up around her like that. So it has that interesting element to it that I thought was kind of so neat. Um, another aspect to this that I think was kind of um, interesting is the other side of things with Jimmy and Lena. You had Mackenzie coming to, uh, you know, Jimmy about the whole, like, oh yeah, like, my source says that there's some off the, uh, um, black book stuff going on with L Corp about genetic, you know, experiments, but it's like, that's not illegal. Yeah. But if that's the case, why is it, you know, off books and stuff like that? Why there's kind of like a black budget for it, essentially, you know? So it's like, so Jimmy, you know, goes to talk to Lena about it, but she has that cute moment of being like, no, 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 no. Like I'm practicing for game night. You know, some couples, you know, need to work on the communications. Other need to work on their, um, competitive side. And so it's kind of this cute moment, and it's also because she's super competitive and wants to win. But when it was all said and done, um, he didn't talk to her about it. When he confronts McKenzie later on, it's like, oh yeah, there's nothing to it. One of two things. One, the f first thing to know is there's no way he talked to Lena about it. He never did. Because I think this is his way of protecting Lena, because he probably also knows that this is connected to that. You know, He doesn't know what all connects to it, but... The whole situation is that um, she's working on giving people superpowers, so he knows it's connected to that. So he's kind of, because he's going, it's kind of a leap of faith. He's like, I, uh, Lena has the best of intentions, so no matter what she's doing, I'm aside with it. Even though the fact of the matter is, last time we saw, people were dying from this situation. She tried it on one person, but we don't know for sure if she subsequently kept trying it on more and more people. But it's like, do the ends justify the means? It's like, yes, you're trying to do it for the greater good, but the sacrifices along the way. I mean, the fact of the matter is, she's tampering with something she shouldn't. That's the hair now, and they're like, there could be massive ramifications for her doing that, you know? So that's something we're going to have to wait and see. But also, you know, for him, for, you know, Jimmy as well, it's like Lena went out of her way to protect him before. So it's like he's going out of his way to protect her. Now, this, I get the feeling like this is going to circle back around and bite him in the ass in some shape or form. Like, because Mackenzie's like, oh, my source is usually right about this stuff. Either something's going to happen and Mackenzie's going to come back and be like, yo, I, I doubt she'd question Jimmy like that, but maybe she'll come back and be like, yo, something's uh, maybe presenting more. I don't know. Or eventually it's going to get to the point that Jimmy can no longer keep his mouth shut about it. The fact that matters, he has to bring it up with Lena, you know. So I, I'm curious to see how that all ends up turning out because I didn't talk about it but let's not forget the entire situation that went down this episode was because of the other Kara because that other Kara was born from the Haranel and so 
when they tried to uh, resuscitate her, it ended up like releasing the heronel in her. I don't know if it was all of it that would made up her, but it seemed like it scattered across the world. Obviously, some of it landed in those pills in this episode, but where the rest of the energy go and is that why she stayed con unconscious the entire episode because all the hair and nail inside of her is going scattered across the world i doubt that maybe given enough time she can recover i'm curious to see because the dude at the end was like oh i need to get in contact with someone in america and i'm like lena like lena like either they're going to try and capture lena to force her help in this regard or Lena might look at this as an opportunity, like, oh, this is a different Supergirl, maybe I can experiment, you know, test out her hair and nail treatment on her, and then kind of perfect it, potentially. Or she's going to take this Supergirl and kind of keep it as her secret weapon. Potentially, I don't know. I'm very curious. Like, there is probably someone else entirely. It'd be kind of interesting, like... Like, I feel like there's certain winks and nods you could go to towards that situation. Like, people that, you know, might have popped up in the show before that haven't popped up subsequently. Or, in particular, just, you know, maybe villains that I'm not really that aware of. In, like, the Kryptonian family uh, rogues gallery. Now I'm sitting here thinking about it. The one other person I feel like could potentially benefit from this, Cadmus, I think... I was thinking, like, this might be about introducing Lillian back into everything. We haven't seen her since. Has she popped? She hasn't popped up this season, has she? I think the last time she popped up was... No, she did. Because she helped out with the whole Jimmy situation, right? Yes. So, I'm so curious to see, you know, if that's what that's potentially leading into. Because if Cadmus got their hands on her... Plus, they still secretly have uh, Cyber or Superman, because I don't think that was ever dealt with. I could be wrong, though. Because let's not forget, Cadmus is technically connected to the whole, like, Agent of Liberty storyline, too, because it's like, well, was it the, the the siblings? But that wasn't with Lillian. That was just them kind of doing their own thing, so. Either way, I'm very interested to see what the next episode has in store for us with all of this, um, especially like like you know to see where everyone goes, like to see what Nia ultimately does, <clears throat> to see how Kara and Alex handle you know what their relationship continues to be like, you know especially Alex's relationship with Supergirl. How will how will Kara handle herself as Supergirl around? Alex, especially they're on such bad terms, because it's like when it comes to the DEO now going for, because the thing is, no one else is going to have her side like that, because no one's going to go up against Alex, no matter even if they're on good terms with Supergirl. But even the people who knew her identity no longer knew it, so they don't have that connection either. The same way that Alex did, because that added, I think, I think, a human element to it, their perception of it, because they understood like, oh, helping Car, Car was helping Alex. So they like that. It was kind of like a. It, the connection between them, so it's like they'll do anything for Kara because they'll do anything for Alex, and they'll do anything for Alex for Supergirl, you know, that kind of back and forth, so like I said, I get the feeling Alex and Haley are going to be a lot more on the same page, and I'm sure even Haley's going to be like, wow, I can't believe we're so good now, I wonder what changed or something, so there's going to be that, but also to see what's up with this other, you know, Supergirl's, you know, the other Kara situation, as well as, you know, Lena and Jimmy. I'm so excited to see what the next episode it has in store. Do note that there will not be an episode for the next two weeks that uh, Supergirl will be returning on February 17th. So keep that in mind. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good night.